People sometimes wonder, did the golden rule originate with Jesus or was he talking about something that other people had talked about? And the answer is yes and no. We are learning from Jesus, our master teacher, greatest, most impactful teaching of all time, Sermon on the Mount, what's insurmountable in this world, not problem, conflict, evil, suffering, it's God and his kingdom. And Jesus summarizes all of the law and the prophets and all the teaching of the Sermon on the Mount with this one statement, therefore, so in everything, do to others what you would have others do to you. Now, this had been around for a long time, and that's not a bad thing. Sometimes people have this kind of odd idea that everything in the Bible is supposed to have been originated in the Bible, should never have been thought of by anybody before, or that would make the Bible less unique or Jesus less special. What makes Jesus special is not that what he said had never been said by anybody else before. It's who he was and what he brought. Um, Aquinas said that part of the beauty of the golden rule is that it is both revealed in scripture by Jesus, but it's also conforming to what he called natural law. Any person, any human being that has a conscience, when we hear it, there's something inside of us that says, oh yes, that's right, because that's the way that God made us. Um, if you want to know what is the most uh, unique part of the golden rule according to Jesus, now I'm not sure that anybody ever put it quite like he did, uh, I think that the negative form, don't do to others what they would hate, is more common in the ancient world than the positive form that he uses, the golden rule as opposed to the silver rule. But I would say that the, the most unique part of it is the very first word, therefore, in everything, or so, in everything. What does the therefore refer to? Well, it refers to all of his teaching, and in particular that now the blessed life, life in the provision and care of God is available to all human beings. You don't have to worry about your agenda anymore. You don't have to worry about yourself anymore. Therefore, because now the blessed life is available to you and true goodness has been revealed by him. Therefore, we have the freedom and the power and the strength to actually live out the golden rule. Martin Luther loved the golden rule, wrote a whole book just about the golden rule and said, it's not about enlightened self-interest. It's not quid pro quo. Let's all be good to each other and the life will be better for everybody. Um, it's actually uh, uh, part of the picture that we have from Jesus that the universe is God's self-giving love. It's through all of creation that is expressed primarily through Jesus on the cross. And so the golden rule is part of a, a much bigger uh, vision of reality. So we're to live a golden rule-shaped life. Dietrich Bonhoeffer uh, wrote this in his book, The Cost of Discipleship. Jesus gives the disciples a simple rule by which even the most simple-minded can evaluate whether their dealings with others are right or wrong. They need only reverse the I or you in the relationship. And that's what we're doing now. The, the impact of this has been unbelievably power, oh, powerful over the centuries. There was a manuscript of the Bible at about 8, 810, the Book of Kells, beautifully illustrated and they illustrated the golden rule by a picture of a dog shaking hands with a bunny rabbit and of course the idea there is shalom the prophets would talk about the lion will lie down with the lamb golden rule over all of existence um jc penny when he started his store actually initially it was called the golden rule store to this day you can look online and there are golden rule travel agencies, golden rule restaurants. There are golden rule tattoo parlors. Probably a good idea. So in what's left in these few minutes, I want to talk about how do you live a golden rule shaped life? Because the golden rule is available to us every single moment. First of all, how do you have a golden rule wake up? This is from the Roman thinker Marcus Aurelius. Again, golden rule is woven into natural law. When you arise reluctantly early in the morning, think like this. I arise to accomplish a human task. Should I then complain when I'm about to do that for which I was born, for which I was placed on earth? Or was I created to pamper myself under the blankets, even if that's more pleasant? Were you born then to enjoy and generally to feel, but not to act? 
Don't you see the plants, the birds, the ants, the spiders, the bees, all who perform their own tasks and in their own way, helping to let the cosmos functions. Don't you then want to do your work as human? Nobody wants to be around people who wake up and then just decide to use you as the complaint department in their life, negative, self-preoccupied, um, constantly stressed, never grateful for what they're doing. So a golden rule, wake up. Now, God, I arise today through the mighty strength of the Trinity. This is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad. Wake up according to the golden rule. And then uh, write golden rule emails. Just think if I got an email from somebody, would I want it to be just all business, all information, or would I like something playful, something creative, something teasing, something encouraging, something personal? When you get a phone call, make it a golden rule phone call. This is from Will Dursk's called the Rule of Benedict for Beginners. Every telephone conversation is a question of hospitality, of listening and responding. Golden rule listening. But when the phone rings, our spontaneous reaction to it often is to view it as a disturbance, as an interruption of our work, or even more important, as the entry of a trespasser. We often feel rather irritated. Um, so he says, to help myself, I often say a little mental prayer of blessing for my still unknown guest. When the phone rings, you are having a guest. This falls under what the New Testament calls hospitality. I often say a little mental prayer of blessing for my still unknown guest. Benedicamus Domino. We'll probably show you how to spell that if you're interested in Latin, which means it might be the Lord. You know, the New Testament talks about how some people in practicing hospitality have entertained angels unaware. You never know. It might be the Lord. My change of attitude, no matter how modestly it may have succeeded, may well be sensed on the other end of the line. The conversation may have a different tone and content. And then he goes on to talk about what we might think of as golden rule looking. When you're at a meeting or a reception where people are talking to each other, who does not know the phenomenon conveniently labeled as the reception look? You're in a conversation with somebody, but you notice his look is out of focus because he's looking at something beside you in the direction of someone who is more important than you. And sometimes you have two people and they're both looking for somebody else who is more important. So instead, the golden rule look means look at the other person that you would like to have another person look at you as though you are worth their attention and they're just genuinely interested in you. Today, practice golden rule looking. Today, practice golden rule shopping. I was shopping on a day when I was working on the golden rule and uh, at the end when I was buying some stuff, the person said, and do you want to join our rewards club? Now, my initial thought was, I don't want to join your rewards club. That's one of my pet peeves. Who thought up rewards clubs? And everybody tries to get you on it. And then that means I will get emails from you for the rest of my life every time that you're having. And then I thought, you know, the person behind that counter is a real person. And uh, uh, rewards club probably wasn't their idea. They're probably required to do this. And how would I like to be responded to if I was that person by the And I said, I'd love to join the Rewards Club. Let's do it. Let's get at it right now. Doesn't mean I'll never unsubscribe from it, but it just changed that interaction. Make today a golden rule work day. One time I landed at O'Hare Airport. I got on the shuttle bus. Driving a shuttle bus, I would think of usually as a pretty thankless job. You're just constantly moving, people in a hurry, people kind of stressed, people kind of gruff. But the guy who drove this shuttle bus was a golden rule shuttle bus driver. And he was talking to us the whole time. Hey, so glad you're here. I'm going to keep looking now. I can always tell when I'm looking at the side of the curb, if somebody is looking for my bus and I want to help them out, there's somebody right there. And he pulled over and when he would get off, he would greet that person. He would always grab their luggage before they could get it, get back on. All right, everybody, I know you're in a hurry to get to where you're going to go. So we're going to make up the time and I'm going to get you there faster. Than this guy was so good. People didn't want to get off the shuttle bus. They would just drive around O'Hare Airport a couple of times just for the experience of being with somebody who was a golden rule shuttle bus driver. Today, you can do golden rule work. Today, you can have a golden rule mind. 
as you might know, I've been reading through this little book, The Practice of the Presence of God. And at one point, Brother Lawrence makes this fabulous comment, overthinking disturbs everything. Our trouble begins with our thoughts. So be careful that as soon as you notice that your thoughts have nothing to do with the task in the present moment or your well-being, that you reject those thoughts. Just be monitoring my mind because the golden rule starts there. Because actually, God is aware of what's going on in my mind. And I can have a golden rule towards God. And when I watch what's happening in my mind, and up, here comes a thought, and it's going to tempt me towards resentment or towards worry or towards a wrong desire. It doesn't have to do with, what am I doing right now? Right now, I'm talking to you. That's the only place my mind needs to be so that I can try to make these words as best I can to give to you and say, God, would you help me say this however you want it said? And then bless the well-being of you, my friend, who are listening to this right now. That's a golden rule of mine. There is nothing that cannot follow the shape of the golden rule. You are to live a golden rule-shaped life. Make this in everything because of who Jesus is and what he has done and that he is right here. A golden rule-shaped day. If you enjoyed that teaching, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes in this series, Insurmountable, which is all about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. You can also head over to our website, becomenew.com, where we have over 700 10-minute teachings, all dedicated to helping you grow spiritually one day at a time. My name's Tim, and I'm a part of the team here at Become New. hey Just want you to know this is so much more than a YouTube channel. It's really a community of people who are brought together, not by our strengths or our ability to achieve, but by our weaknesses and our need for help from God. So we're glad that you're here. If you have a prayer request, there's a group of us who meet each weekday, Monday through Friday, to pray for viewers just like you. So you can send us your request to the number 855-888-0444. We'd love to pray for you. We're glad that you're here. We'll catch you next time.